Hello, it is February 11th, 2022, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello and welcome back to Thoughts from the Word. As we finish out this week, I want us to look at some verses that speak to the grace of God and how that plays in our lives. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 7 through 9. Hear now the word of the Lord. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which is set forth in Christ. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. So Paul, writing to the church at Philippi, is seeking to encourage them as he begins this this book by speaking uh, talking about the creation of God by God through Christ, about the work that Christ has done upon the cross. And in this verse, we find that we have our redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of our trespasses through his blood. But all of that was given to us, as we read at the end of verse 7, according to the riches of his grace. God in his grace saw fit to love us despite the fact that we were sinners, as Paul writes in Romans 5, uh, that God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 8 tells us in this passage that he lavished that grace upon us. He didn't just throw out a little smattering. He has smothered us with it in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will. Because of God's grace, we now know the means and the way to salvation. We know that we don't have to continue offering sacrifices or doing this act or that act, that it is through the redemption of his blood, uh, through Christ's blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the sacrifice he made, as we read here, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. Christ was grand, was the purpose of, uh, his coming, his life, his death was the purpose for us to have life and know His will, know the Lord's will. Because God in His grace sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Let me finish this week by asking the question of everybody watching. Do you fully know the truth and the grace of Jesus Christ? Do you see that grace being poured out upon you, lavished upon you each day? It's not just a single act. It is in all of life poured out and given to us each and every day. Look and see and taste and know that he is Lord. Jonathan Edwards writing uh, on uh, this verse writes these words. There is a spiritual light imparted to the soul by God, which is different from anything that is obtained by natural means. It gives us a true sense of the divine excellence of things revealed in the word of God. It brings not only a belief that God is holy, but a sense of the loveliness of God's holiness. The mind is able to dwell upon spiritual things with delight. Earnestly seek this spiritual light. It is the most excellent wisdom that any creature is capable of. It is more excellent than any human learning. The least glimpse of God's glory in Christ exalts the soul. This knowledge is sweet and joyful. It gives a view of those things that are the most exquisitely, are the most exquisitely beautiful. The spiritual light is the drawing of the light of the glory in the heart. There is nothing so powerful as this, to support persons in affliction and to give mind peace in this stormy and dark world. This light effectually influences the will and changes the nature of the soul. It assimilates our nature to the divine nature and changes the soul into his, his image. It weans us from the world and raises our inclinations to heavenly things. It will turn the heart of God for, for its only portion. The light alone will bring the soul to a saving trust in Christ. It causes the heart to embrace the joyful tidings and acquiesce to, in the revelation of Christ as Savior. It causes the soul to give itself up entirely to Christ. This light has its fruit in a universal holiness of life. No mere notional notional understanding will do this. This light reaches the bottom of the heart and changes the nature. It shows God is worthy to be obeyed and served. It draws forth 
the heart and a sincere love to God, and it convinces us of the reality of those glorious rewards that God has promised to those who obey him. That promise given to us by the grace of God for the glory of Jesus Christ. It is alive and working in your life today. Trust in Christ. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would reveal to us more and more your will and your graces in our life that we may glorify you and live for you all the days of our lives. I pray that you would be uh, with all who are uh, sick, uh, who are homebound, who are straying from you, that all may find healing, the true healing that is found in Jesus Christ and him alone. I pray, O oh God, that you would give us your strength today and your wisdom and your guidance. And I pray for each one watching that we would have the opportunity uh, by your hand, providentially, to share with someone else the grace that you've bestowed upon us, that you've lavished upon us. May we lavish the grace of Jesus Christ upon others around us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Got a little tongue-tied today, but thank you for bearing with it. I look forward to seeing you again next week as we gather together to hear some more thoughts from the Word.